Hey, hello students. Thank you very much for your cooperation. My name is Fortune Global. Today, we are looking at labor relations at five, which is the course under human resource management. At this point in time, we have decided to do a module three of the syllabus, since uh, this syllabus consists of the three long chapters. Module 3 talks about the structuring of labor relations in South Africa. Okay, the learning outcomes. Framework for labor relations. A student should understand how all the components of the labor relations interact. The influence of the South African economy on the labor relations system, which normally has got negative effects. Okay, the framework for labor relations of our country uh, consists of uh, four important features. Namely, the inputs, converting mechanisms, the output, as well as the feedback loop. In terms of the input, you must picture the role players or the characters that characterizes the labor relations system of the country. For example, we have the state, we have the employer, we have the employee. So all of these parties have got different powers, objectives, as values. Now, here in our notes, inputs are summarized by the concept of goals, conflict, and power, which are conditioned by the flow of effect from environmental subsystems. If I can give you an example under the input, at the moment we are facing a situation where trade unions are not willing to go back to work because they think employers have not taken uh, safety measures into cognizance in respect of the invisible enemy, which is COVID-19. On the other hand, the employer is expecting and he wants people to get back to work to make a profit. So you can see in terms of the input, in nature there's a, too much of a contradiction. Okay, converting mechanism. This links the input into output. For example, of the conversion in the labor relations system, it could be the strike. If the employees from the input are not happy about salaries and wages, or they want increase, they can uh, resort into a strike, which is a conversion. If the strike has taken place, any repercussion or the outcome of the strike will be the result called the output, which is the third uh, feature of the framework of the labor relation, which compromises the financial, social, and psychological rewards to employees or the breakdown of the relationship. The fourth one is the feedback loop. The feedback loop is the reflection of the labor relations system after the input is converted into output. Now a person can articulate and understand what type of labor relations system that particular country is on. It is called the feedback loop. If you look in terms of our notes here, we say through, it is through which the output flows back into industrial relations system and the effect of which also into the different environmental subsystems. If we paraphrase the issue of inputs more, the inputs are divided into two. We have internal inputs, 
which are within the system. If we say they are within the system, they are within the relationship between the employer and employee. Where you have the state which provides legal protection. For example, the state will provide the constitution, the basic conditions of Employment Act, all the pieces of legislation for the purpose of protecting both parties, which is the employer and the employee. The second, the internal input, we have employers and employers organization. These are the stakeholders who provide the supply of labor to the employee, of which they do have a right and recourse. They do have a right to hire, to dismiss, and they do have a right to retrench. The third party is there, employees and trade unions. You can see now, in terms of the internal input, each party has its own powers, values, and objectives. In terms of the power, for example, the employer has a power to appoint and dismiss. On the other hand, the employee has the power to strike. It uses the solidarity strength because the individual employee cannot strike, but they should form part of the group or be part of the trade union to be able to confront the employer using the solidarity strength. Okay? Objectives, the employer wants to make profit all the time. The employer will only focus on the profit. On the other hand, employee wants good salary and bonuses. So you can see that the internal inputs, they contradict in nature. If you look in terms of the values, the example there is the fact that the employer expects employee to work more time. On the other hand, employee wants to spend more time with the family. So if you look in terms of this input, you will realize that uh, it will have a feedback loop, it will have a reflection to the labor relation system of any country. Okay? The second uh, type of input is external inputs, which are from outside the system, obviously. We have economic system, we have political system, we have legal system, so as social system. If you look in terms of the economic system, it has got product market, which is a product within the market in relation to the demand for it. If there is a decrease in the demand of a product, the companies will be required to cut the cost. By so doing, they will try and reduce as many costs as they can. One of the measures is to retrench the employees, which is going to backfire now because the employees, the unions, are not going to entertain that. They are going to go on strike, okay? which will reflect, reflect now back to the labor relations system of the country. We have the labor market. If the employer wants a certain type of employee in terms of the qualification, and you realize that uh, employees do not have those qualifications, the employer will be forced to retrench once again, which will result into labor unrest and strikes. Okay, money market. If the employees are retrenched or are dismissed from their workplaces, they are not going to be able to have income for them to have loans in financial institution, which is going to affect the economy itself. Okay? As well as technological changes. There is an instance where if the employee does not have the competence 
or the qualification that requires the understanding of the new technologies, the skills become redundant and the employer is going to be forced now to uh, terminate the services of that particular employee, which touches the issue of technological changes, which is going to create the problems when it comes to labor relations systems of the country. Okay? The political system. Here we are looking at the national legislature where uh, political parties are debating around issues of labor. For example, the abolishment of labor brokers. It is always discussed at parliamentary level that these labor brokers are problematic in the system. So here we say new legislation and they also amend the existing legislations. Okay, the legal system. We have the statutory law. If you, to, if you refer, if you look in terms of the statutory law, there are pieces of legislation that we already have in South Africa. You can name basic conditions of Employment Act. We have Labor Relations Act. We have Skills Development Act. We have got Employment Equity Act and so forth. All of those pieces of legislations are statutory control or statutory law. Under legal system, we have a common law, which is a law with principles of natural justice, okay? As well as the implementation of standard labor legislation. The fourth one is the social system. Under social system, we look at the objectives and goals, the values of the population, the perceptions, the public opinion. Here, uh, for example, if we say the firm is situated in a colored community, surely the expectation will be that the employer should employ more colored people than other race groups. This is affecting the internal component while it is from outside environment. It is called the social system. The third part is converting these inputs into output. What is important here are the structures to convert input into output. We have structures or bodies. We have company procedures or in-house procedures. We've got processes. In terms of the structures or bodies, we've got bargaining council. A bargaining council is there to discuss matters of mutual interest or bread and butter issues. For example, in the bargaining council level, they negotiate the increase in salaries, the leave, the job descriptions, the trainings. The example of any uh, bargaining council, it could be the one that is used by public service, which is General Public Service Sectoral Bargaining Council. Okay. The CCMA. CCMA is a commission for conciliation, mediation, and arbitration, where disputes are resolved. Okay? Then you have shop steward committees, as well as the safety committees. If you look in terms of number two, which is called uh, company or in-house procedures, disciplinary procedures, we've got grievance procedures, we've got retrenchment, we've got disputes, and appeal procedures. These are essential for a student to understand that uh, this forms part of the conversion of input into output under category number two, which is in-house procedures. The third part of this 
are the processes. The collective bargaining is a process of give and take. The employer and employee, they sit on the negotiation table on any matter of mutual interest and discuss and reach the consensus agreement. Okay? Mediation. Mediation is also a process of the CCMA where the CCMA is taking precedent in terms of uh, telling both parties to make sure that they resolve the dispute in an amicable way. Any possible way that both parties should agree that they resolve the dispute. Okay? The arbitration is still part of the CCMA, another step, the final step of the CCMA where the decision taken comes, or we can say the CCMA is the one that dictates the final outcome of the dispute resolution. Okay? Other processes, we have the strikes. A strike can be uh, any form of uh, fighting against, or like, like if the employees are trying to pursue their demands to the employer on bread and butter issues, okay? So as the lockout is another way of uh, the employer to persuade employees to accept any demand from the employer's side. They lock the employee out, okay? And then the output process, which is the third uh, part. The output process, we have two types of agreements. We've got the substantive agreement as well as the procedural agreements. Under substantive agreements, these are agreements which are very much essential where parties should take these agreements into consideration. We have rights and duties, salaries and wages. We can have agreements on working conditions. What we have noticed is that bargaining council in South Africa have agreed on working conditions that they should be bearable or acceptable in human nature. Fringe benefits, leave, holiday, allowances are all the issues discussed during when parties are taking substantive agreement on the negotiation table. Okay. The second one is procedural agreements where <clears throat> it's a union recognition, retrenchments, job evaluation. In terms of the union recognition, this is when, this is a process when the employer is agreeing to recognize a union in terms of its majority. In the continuation of the out output process, there is a conflict breakdown in the relationship which results into violence, dismissals, loss of union memberships, loss of production, even closing down of the factories. As well as the feedback loop that I indicated at the beginning that uh, this is a reflection of all the activities that took place in the framework of the labor relations from the input, the conversion, the output. The feedback loop is the articulation of confirming what type of labor relations system is that country, that country is, so to speak. Now, taking into consideration that uh, this chapter is more about economy versus labor relations of the country. In most cases, there are too many negative effects when it comes to uh, labor relations and economy. Here we are looking at the influence of the South African economy on the labor relations system. 
we know exactly that uh, the loss of productivity due to strikes. Companies are losing millions of rents due to the fact that there are too many strikes in this country, mainly in private companies. Inflation, obviously we know that inflation is a sustained increase in the general price level, which results a decrease in the value of money. So, yeah, the third one is higher unemployment and job losses. Social unrest, weakening in rent, negative investments. So all these are the influence of the South African economy on labor relations system, which in most cases, it's negative effects. Now let's look at the characteristics of the South African economy. Now in this regard, we are saying that the students should give as many as possible uh, as long as it makes sense. It should relate to uh, the current situation of South Africa. What we have for now is that uh, we have the fact that it has got rich mineral wealth. If we say rich mineral wealth, it was picture the fact that South Africa has got gold and diamond. So those are the best uh, resources that we can have as a country. High levels of poverty. High unemployment, low economic growth, because if you look in terms of the economic growth, it is very, very much uh, weak. We cannot say that our economy is growing because every now and then it drops. So it fluctuates. Not enough uh, job opportunities as we know, especially for youth. This country does not have enough job opportunities. Huge foreign debt, weak economic infrastructure, fast rate of mechanism. Just to paraphrase this one, the fast rate of mechanism is a situation where the employer is retrenching people and replace those people with the machine. Because according to the employer, the machine does not complain, but the human will always complain, which will result into unemployment, which is uncalled for, according to unions. The differences between free market, which is capitalism, and socialism. The free market system promotes economic freedom, socialism system, no economic freedom for individual. So most of the things are happening collectively. Private ownership, socialism is based on public ownership. Economic growth is stimulated under free market system or capitalism Economic growth is not stimulated under socialism. Goods and services are produced to make profit. Individuals are compensated on the principles of individual contribution. In our conclusion, you now have the understanding of the framework of labor relations of South Africa, the influence of South African economy on labor relations. Please read through your textbook and make notes on the above for exam purposes. Thank you.